Okay, hello, 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 everybody. How are we? Today is, uh, what day is it? Tuesday, 17th of May. Hope everyone's fine. Uh, as promised yesterday, uh, if Ash came on the round table, I said I would do a uh, update. So here we are uh, for the update. I'll do a quick few LOs as quick as I possibly can because there's lots to get through. Uh, if I've missed somebody, it's because the chat, okay, uh, it only goes a certain way for me. So we've got uh, Rafael Saint-Germain, you're here, Carol uh, Kezo and Vernon Charles. Ah, the lovely Angie is here from Germany. Vigate, ganz gut. Uh, nice to see you here. Albert Reed and Barry Dang is in the house. Judy Oliver, Mike Davey and uh, Melissa. Uh, Frederick is here. Lystra is here as well. Uh, Albert Reed and Rose from South Africa. Hi, how you doing? Pam Turner, Suzanne Bott, Be Happy and Mike Davey. Hello, the lovely Pat Parent and Grams of All Trader here. Judy Oliver, Gemma Ramiki. Hi to you guys. Theo uh, Fanidas, Fanidas is here as well. Lynn Nakamoto, Gemma Ramiki. I said hello to you. Uh, Leaf uh, Langness is here as well. See Petrina and uh, Prosper Abbey is here. Uh, Peter Hage or Hoge, not quite sure which way round, but there you go. Jarmo's here, Tim Dillon, Mary Pendy, and uh, 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 uh Gwen Maylit. Hi, and uh, Gemma Ramiki. Hi, uh, Jan Andre Drelka. Hello, Vicky Barker, Angela Lynn, and Sergio is here. John, the barbershop white. How are you doing, buddy? Nice to see you here. Uh, Amodo and Alan Bourne. Hi. And Karen Widman, Crystal Johnson, and Yoha Hellman. Hello. The lovely Susie McRae is here. Great job yesterday, Susie. You ha definitely had the ash glow going on. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Susan Hodges, Judy Oliver, and uh, Pam Turner. Hi, Dixie Crabtree, and uh, Tanya Hennard. Hello, Chris Hey Hey Johnson is in the house. Nice and early for you, mate. Judy Oliver, Aaron Eaton, and Crystal. Thank you very much for the super sticker. That is amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, that is fantastic. That is from Aaron Eaton. Hello, buddy. And thank you very much for that. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Donald Grant is here. Marie Pendy. Zombie guy. You're always around. Hello, buddy. Vic Loban. Hi, uh, John Berea. Thanks for the little chat in the Q&A, mate. Uh, yesterday, Elliot Promisil. Hi, El Pape is in the house. Dustin Grove, Terence Godfrey, and Pete, uh, Peter Hayes. I've said hello to M. Kaylee. Hi. Uh, executive decision. Made many of those in my life. Definitely. Uh, for, Jeff from California. Hi. Patricia uh, Soiver. Hi. Uh, Laurie Lunn and Bernard Brady. Okay, where else we got to? Leonard Johnson, Greg Gaynor, Polly Cherry, and Christina Cashella. Hi to you guys. Trying to get through as far as I can. Uh, Dixie Crabtree, hello. Sherry Derwer and uh, Stephen Holland. Hi, Brenda W. Lewis White from Canada. And Ch -ch -ch -ch. Carl Chapman. Hi, Roy Davis. Uh, Donald, uh, Keith Donnelly, sorry, Ooh, jumped a bit. Keith Donnelly, where were you? Uh, Dave Angelic, Antoinette Hayes, BJ Patel from Yorkshire, Kim Mills, Peter Morrell, hi. Uh, Ch -ch -ch Antoinette Hayes, I've said hello to you. Jim Palmisano, Misano, hi. Uh, Shane Rust, Kathy Knight, Gifty is here. Helen de la Bastide, hi. Brian Orwig, uh, Aduko uh, Akpan. Be surprised if I got that right. Randy Leonard, uh, Nancy Badcock, and Ch -ch -ch -ch. Brian Quirks in the house. Actually, it's not. It's Sharon. And hello to you, lovely. Ron Johnson and Azakan. 
Jane's waving at everybody. Uh, see Petrina and Carl Chapman. Okay, let's get cracking. Uh, so Ash came on. Uh, he does like the round table. He likes the format. And obviously, every time he comes on, uh, we he did really bring us some great updates. So it really was good. Uh, so let's start at the top then. And we'll run through it all. And obviously, I'll give you my take on things as we're going along uh, from what I took from it. So he's feeling a lot better. Uh, he did have a cold, but that's gone now. So uh, nothing to worry about as far as his health is concerned. Uh, he is in Virginia, uh, been traveling all over the place, uh, but very shortly, uh, maybe to Florida. So he will have a bit more time uh, on his um uh, on his plate uh, during his travels. Okay. He really has been to some fantastic uh, places uh, where he's visited and he's always looking uh, at good spots uh, to impress people, not only uh, founders, but uh, other people as well. Good restaurants, good places, etc. Uh, so that is always in the back of his mind of where would be good venues for on passive, not just uh, to meet with founders, but also, to have founders gathering. So he's also making a mental note of that as he's going around. So the big news of the night, or one of the big news of the night was that he has in his mind's eye, and he does know uh, when the founder's date is going to finish. He hasn't disclosed this uh, to us. Uh, he wants to talk to selected leaders and founders first to uh, ask them their views uh, on what to do, whether we do a, a release date. OK, so uh, give you guys the heads up uh, for on this date. That will be the end of the founders. Or the other alternative is we have been saying now for a very long time that the founders position is going to be finishing very shortly. Uh, or the other alternative is to just wake up one morning, log in to your back office uh, to find that that founder's position has finished. So he'll be talking to selected founders and leaders about this, and I'm sure everyone together will make the right decision that is best for the company at the end of the day. So uh, that was the big news as far as the founder's position is uh, going to uh, was talking about. He said it's not going to be months at all. Uh, it's days rather than months uh, so he just wants to respect uh, the, uh, the pending founders that are there at the moment, give these time folks a bit of time to get in. Uh, so today he has a light in his mind uh, that we have got a fixed date uh, for that founder's position finishing. So that's really is uh, a, a great, a great uh, thing that he's brought up. Uh he also mentioned that about people that had been approaching him uh, to get in underneath Ash within the on passive company. Uh, he kicked all these people back. Now, they're very big, uh, either in uh, network marketing or in business themselves. And he has not even got a position himself. So he has basically kicked these guys back and said, look, if you want to be a founder, there's plenty of people out there. Just contact one of them. And you can sign up underneath them. But it's his view, and I certainly don't disagree with him, that many of these people are waiting uh, for the launch of On Passive rather than coming in as a founder. And that's actually a born benefit to us as founders because they're going to come in anyway, uh, whether as a reseller or a customer to use our products and services. So we are not here to twist people's arms and all the rest of it. And we actually want founders to come in at the moment for the right reasons. Uh, we're not about twisting people's arms and all the rest of it to get them in. That's not how we operate. But the good news is that these people are out there and they are looking at on passive uh, and they will have no choice but to come in because of our technology and our products. So we really are in a great place. He went on to say that we don't have a cap on our technolo technology. Uh, the next generation of people, they are the ones that are going to be driving on passive forward. Uh, we are unlimited in everything we do. That is from usage of a person using our products and services, but also uh, for us providing products and services for our customers. 
but it will continue. Keep on going and going and going. He actually said it is time to congratulate ourselves. The last three and a half, nearly four years have been a long, long road for many of us. But it's now done. Everything that he said uh, behind the scenes, as far as products, behind uh, ecosystems, they've done. We're done. It's a done deal, and we have done it. So he wanted to congratulate, or for us to congratulate ourselves on uh, having that vision uh, as a founder in these early days, as the early adopter of on passive, uh, and. I am pretty sure that once this founder's position is closed, he will be divulging a lot more information that uh, he hasn't been able to before. Why? Because we want people here for the right reasons. And if he divulges the kind of information that we really are looking forward to hearing, then people will be coming in for the wrong reasons. So we want people who have got the vision who've got the passion, who've got the heart of on passive. And that's what we are after at the moment whilst we have. Uh, we're having these types of sessions uh, with Ash Mufar at the moment uh, to give everyone a better understanding of exactly what this founder's position uh, is for. Uh, he wanted to say as well that they've developed as well a really natty new tool that they are using uh, in the background at the moment. It might uh, end up going to public launch as well. But at the moment, it's been used specifically for the uh, legal departments and and, got, and uh, communicating people within on passive uh, that are using AI and internal screening uh, of all sorts of bits, snippets of YouTube's rankings, percentages of these videos of how much hate speech is involved in them. Uh, and there is a complete list. It's all documented, uh, what video it is, uh, how many comments are on it, uh, how much how much content of that video is hate speech, et cetera, et cetera. They are collecting all of this data. OK, and they will be handing this data over to the respective people. That is the people who run YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn or any of these other social uh, media networks. And these guys really are going to be in the deep uh, caca uh, once this information has gone out. He is that confident that it is going to be something that uh, companies will want to have to be able to generate this information using artificial intelligence that he is looking at having it as a product that people can buy to use alongside themselves. No, no other company has ever done this before, uh, but Ash has done it because he respects us as founders. He wants us to have a clean name, not only uh, as individuals, but also uh, for us as on passiveans within the company. Now, a lot of us leaders here, myself included, uh, we really have been taken through the ring ringer over the last couple of years or so as far as people taking exactly what I'm doing now uh, for you guys and cutting it, editing it, using it to their advantage for not nice things. For me, water off a duck's back, I don't really care. But for I do know of other leaders that it has affected them. And this is really what Ash is trying to do with it, this software that he's got uh, to go after these people so that they're not going to do it uh, anymore. So my guarantee to you, he says, is that this will stop the attackers. OK, uh, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but with all this information, with the legal teams and everything else that we are doing, uh, it will stop in the uh, long run. Uh, we will not allow them to sacrifice your hard work or your life that you have given to on passive for their own gaze. We are in a great smart position. Uh, people are now flocking to on passive. We got new staff members and founders uh, joining us on a daily basis. The new staff uh, are incredibly talented. And if you go back to last Monday, uh, he was saying about the various other uh, big IT companies we already know about Apple and Amazon, just to name a couple, uh, Microsoft as well, that we have actually had staff 
change from these uh, household names to come and work for on passive. Uh, so we really are being the hunted uh, at the moment. Uh, I think this is going to continue more and more and more, especially as word gets out from an uh, employee's point of view. These guys know each other. They all sort of do the rounds. They all keep in touch. And when they are speaking about on passive, uh, they get paid uh, more than normal. They have a much more freer range. They are uh, tested as well, which people love uh, to be, especially these geeky type of people. They love to have their minds stretched in various areas. And remember, the most important part of everything to do with on passive as far as uh, a tech guy or engineer is concerned is it's not all about the bottom line. Uh, it's about them uh, producing and making things and all these other things uh, that they've not been allowed to do within their other work environment. But with on passive, they're almost given a free reign to do it. So he went on to say, please be careful when sharing information, OK, about new employees and stuff. Just be professional. Uh, he showed a few pictures of our new employees. Uh, but just be mindful that these people have families and all the rest of it. So don't get plastering their uh, faces and names all over the Internet. It really is abuse of their personal information. Uh, and we really need to behave ourselves as far as that matter. Uh, everything that he has mentioned over the last couple of years, as far as products, as far as services, ecosystems, has now been completed and perfected. OK, the digital products are such a done deal. He mentioned everything is a done deal, but he then said, no, no, it's not just a done deal. It's so done deal. So we really have now or we really are now getting to that point where everything is all starting to come together. All those pieces of the jigsaw that was spread out on the table, upside down, mixed up, all the rest of it, they've all been turned over, they've all been organised, and now we are starting to get this picture that is coming together. When you get the picture, then pieces start moving into place very, very quickly. We've all been, done that, been down this road with jigsaws before, it really does speed up at, start, at the start. It's a long old process of organizing and all the rest of it. Uh, with our passive now, we really are picking up the pace. He mentioned this by saying it really is time to step up to the mark and be plugged in. I know many of you people are, uh, but I'm just telling you what was going on on Monday. When we say it's done, he said we have proved it time and time again with our track record. Everything that he has said has happened. This is a culture perfection uh, at its goal. Every product has a team now. So as when we first started, everybody was doing a bit of everything. Now every single product, okay, has its own individual team and they are working on a roadmap for the future with respect to the products and release dates. So we have a roadmap in place for these products, when they're going to be released and all the rest of it. So like I said, things are moving up a notch and we really are going uh, that extra mile. Success is not measured by an event. And the reference he put to this is because there is a lot of founders that are focusing on days, dates, events, etc. He's always said we need to enjoy the, the journey. Uh, but more importantly, we can't just fixate on events because how many times have we looked forward to an event and it's been a bit of a, a wet fart at the end of the day? You get so hyped about it and you go, ugh. So we don't want to be that in that scenario. As an example, he said, a perfect wedding doesn't guarantee a perfect marriage. The event doesn't determine the success of your marriage. And this is so true. You might have an amazing event, but it's not necessarily going to be uh, the making of the whole of that journey afterwards. So uh, events orient people uh has been uh, unsuccessful in a way because they are focused on that one event rather than the long haul. We want to focus on value-driven, long-term and a constant business model. You've already seen how this is going already, guys. 
everything is done in a scheduled and purposeful way. Uh, in the last um, last Monday, he said, "What do we do? We build, test, level out, okay, and make sure everything's working, and then we build, test, level out again." So we've got that big, strong uh, template for the rest of the company to go from. So constant building business model is more successful. We can always be right overall, but we ne might not ever be right all the time. It is You need to really do stand back and look at the whole picture. You know the expression, four paces forward, two back, Okay, you are still going forward. And this really is how businesses are success successful is by continually driving forward. You might not get it right every single time, but on majority of times you will get it right. And so this is unshakable and we are unstoppable as far as that success is consider, uh, con, uh, considered. So all the ecosystem products are so done, he said. Uh, he also went on to say, don't worry about specifics uh, as far as um, where things are, how big are they, except that's all up to the company uh, and the staff within the company. All we need to know is that it works. Uh, Marty Didagamo uh, gives a very good analogy. When I walk into the house and I hit the switch to put the light on, I don't worry about where the electricity has come from, how it was made, how it was generated and all the rest of it. All I want to know is that when I switch that light on, it works. On passive is very similar as far as we are as founders and certainly will be for the resellers and customers. All they want to know is that it does what it says on the tin. You know, the old croupinol does what it says on a tin. That's all we need to know. The logistical sides, the specifics, etc. We don't know, need to know about those because they're immaterial, to be absolutely honest. So we have centuries of experience collectively with our staff and also with us, us as founders. Uh, congratulations to the tech guys that have been out there helping all of us. These guys know their stuff and they really have given a new insight uh, to these products and services of on passive. So he went on to talk a little bit about products, even the tiniest products in our in our eyes, like O-Trim, for instance, uh, is not signed off to go commercial 100% yet. We know the date for it, but it's not actually been signed off. Why? Because it's still part of the jigsaw puzzle. It hasn't been brought in to make that final picture. It's almost like we know what it's going to look like, but we're just going to hold it here for a moment and then we're going to bring it in uh, to the big map at the end. O-mail o -mail data uh, for the second release, okay, is imminent as well. Uh, this is going to continue, okay? This is a minimum value uh, product, an MVB, P, sorry. Uh, we are going to release things uh, a lot faster now as well, okay? Uh, and it's going to be a lot less sketchy as far as these, because a lot of this testing has now been done in, house remember right at the beginning when we first had our o founders back office we were encouraged to use things and try and break them and all the rest of it uh, he wanted to thank us as founders for doing this testing on all of the products that are it's been a massive help all of that uh feedback has gone back to the tech guys now and it really has to help them to upgrade the products Companies will come to us because of the cost effective price and huge value given by the on passive products. Now, I was having this conversation with somebody this morning, actually, about uh, on passive and about companies. And I say the product problem with a lot of founders is that everything we use generally online at the moment is free. You know, me, you, everyone else from a personal perspective. We use a lot of stuff and it's all free. So Facebook and uh, Zoom, what we're on now, uh, and uh, LinkedIn and Instagram and all of this, uh, YouTube, all of the social media platforms, they're all free to us. But they are multi-billion dollar companies. So we have to ask ourselves, why are they? And the reason they are is because I 
A, they either pay an awful lot of money to have the services that they want to to be able to operate these platforms or they produce revenue from advertising. Now, on passive is going to be no different, but companies who are spending millions of dollars already, okay, in the background, either on advertising or on their products and services that they have to use third parties for, if there is another company that is going to give them better value, better products at a cheaper price point, what do you think they are going to do? At the end of the day, they are a business and they are there to make money. One of the biggest things that companies fail on is knowing their base costs to run a business, ones you can't get away from. If there is a company that's giving you something better at a cheaper price point, they are going to come to us. And this is where the mainstay of money is going to come into on passive from businesses, from companies, individuals that already use many, many of the products and services and pay for them. OK, that we are going to produce for on passive. So just I was just putting that in there just to give you an idea of how it is all going to work. So we're going to allow the once the uh, founder's position has uh, finished, OK, that's going to free up a lot of the employees because it does take a lot of physical work uh, to run the founders uh, signing in and all the rest of it. OK, this is going to allow the company to ramp up and focus more on the product mechanically uh, and development side of it. And that's not only with the ones we've got, but for new ones as well. So the founder's position growth has been fantastic and has been blown out of all proportion to where the company expected to go. But now the company needs to go beyond that. We have got to the stage now as a business where the company needs to start reaping the harvest of their hard work. Of the time that the founders have been with the company, it really is now time to move into the next stage, and that is selling. OK, uh, every single day that goes past, OK, as far as the company is concerned, is an extra day of paying out of their own pockets. So they need to be in a position uh, where they are going to be bringing money in rather than continually uh, uh, having money go out. So this is also going to accelerate uh, more staff and more locations because there's going to be more time to be able to focus on this. And we will obviously find out uh, uh, more about this as we go on for that. Uh, he also went on to talk a little bit about our accounts as founders. Now is the time, guys. Uh, I've done a video on this channel uh, to help you through this if you need to. But it really is now time to make sure all our details within our accounts is correct. So you need to go into your profile section, have a look at the names is correct on there, spelt correctly. Make sure the phone number is correct on there. OK, to make if it's not change it, hit the update button, it will be fine. Also, you need to check your NDA, your non-disclosure agreement to make sure that is correct as well. If there's a signature there, you're absolutely good to go. Doesn't matter if it doesn't look anything like your signature you do on a normal basis. You're absolutely fine. Even if you typed it in, you're still absolutely fine. This is in case people have just put a dart or a cross or anything like that. OK, that needs to be changed again uh, on this channel. I've done a video of how to do all that. So this is time sensitive. Why? Because we are getting close to this next stage. Uh, it's easy to do it now. Uh, it won't be impossible to do it, but it'll be a lot, lot harder to do down the line. So it's time to revisit these accounts. Time to make sure all your ducks are in a row and in order so that you are good to go. Uh, he talked a little bit about Dubai. Uh, the president of Dubai and the United Arab Emirates has just passed away, unfortunately. Uh, he'd been there for a very long time. In fact, the Burj Khalifa was named after him. Um, there is a grieving uh, time at the moment in Dubai. And out of respect uh, for the next four or five weeks, there'll be nothing as far as displays are happening uh, within Dubai. Uh, 
this is actually not such of a bad thing because it will give on passive time to focus on things in different areas. Uh, but like I said last week, uh, we've paid now up to, I think, June, July of 2023 for adver advertising over there. So it will resume uh, in the future. We're now zeroing, zeroing in on events that founders will be invited for. Um, this will be either with Ash or Ash will be watching. Hopefully uh, in June, okay, we've got this event that's going to be blowing up and shaking up the internet. Uh, there's also going to be many more rewards for our staff over in Hyderabad as well. We've got a couple more cars. So there's going to be cars, iPhones, uh, laptops, and other giveaways as well. All that's coming up in the very near future uh, as a thank you and hard work for our staff over there. Um, the events that were postponed in Dubai, uh, not in Dubai, in India, sorry. Okay. These are going to happen now uh, sometime in May. Obviously, Ash will get with the Indian leaders uh, once he gets back to Florida, which is probably going to be the back end of this uh, week. Uh, he'll get in touch with the Indian leaders, get a date uh, uh, for them. And obviously, we, as the rest of the founders, will find out about this through the normal challenges. Uh, so let's just recap then and a few more other bits and pieces. Uh, smart, smart people flock to on passive, OK, because of what we are offering. The founders position date, uh, we do. He knows, but hasn't been set yet. Uh, this is going to be based on a decision with the leaders. Uh, data collection of um, people who are out there uh, basically dissing the company. That's all being collected now. All the products are so done. They're all in place. Um, we are really are part of this next commercial sprint and the release for the market. We're never going to stop developing. Uh, we're going to keep on stacking that call forever green. Uh, we're going to guarantee the best uh, products and services. And if we don't like them, they're going to be redone. Uh, OK, everything for this new event is ramping up now and we will get more details about that. He went on to speak a little bit about the data center and he said it's not really right to share with the average founders all the details about the data centers. Like I said before, uh, it's really not necessary to know the nuts and bolts of what happens behind the scenes. All we need to know is that it's there and it's working. So I don't really think that we're going to get any more information about the data center. To be honest, uh, we might find out when it's online, uh, but that's probably all we'll find out. Uh, it's very rare, actually, for a company uh, that is developing so many products um, completely uh, out of the heart uh, who are in the situation where we are as founders. Yes, the company knows that we are really interested in what is going on, but not everybody is trustworthy, unfortunately, uh, to know all the specifics. So some are reliable, some are not. This is just the way it is when you have over 1.3 million founders. It's just how the figures work. So uh, we want to on, honor uh, the majority. OK, uh, so a little bit of detail will be given, but I really don't think uh, everything will be done as well. He mentioned about um, compliance, legalities and stuff like that, that. He said a long time ago, we actually handed over the admin and user keys for the business to governments. And he actually specifically named the American government of how we have spent our money. And this is all to keep uh, track of on passive with the company's knowledge of, uh, of course, to show that we are above board. We are a legal and legitimate business. We have opened the doors to these people so that they can come and audit us uh, over a long, long period of time. So uh, that was really good news to know that that's been happening for a long time um, behind the scenes. OK. It was talking a little bit about uh, founders and about uh, how a smaller percentage make uh, a bigger deal as far as the company. And he was talking about the 80 20 split. Uh, it was going off uh, for quite a long time talking about other uh, uh, other companies uh, and all the rest of it, about how 
20% of the people have 80% of the effect on a company and the remaining 80% of the people only have 20% of the effect on a business. Now, on passive is very much so, I believe, anyway, in that uh, mathematical equation. All you guys here who are plugged in, listening, uh, wanting to be good founders, a part of the process, a part of what we are all doing, you are that 20% making 80% of the uh, difference. And kudos to every single one of you uh, for what you have uh, been doing. Uh, your names are well known everywhere. Uh, he was saying that uh, what we want to do now is to make sure that these 20% who have been doing uh, the difference are the ones that are uh, known and rewarded. Obviously, as far as the payments are concerned, this is going to be done on a mathematical equation. So everybody gets the same. But the other other extras he was talking about, that is going to be uh, given out to those that deserve it. So finally, he ended by saying uh, that money is not a thing that motivates Ash. Uh, he's wealthy in his own right, way before on passive. It's not something that uh, gets him up in the morning. It's not something that gives him his buzz uh, and makes him work so hard. What makes him work so hard is to see other people become successful, other people to become wealthy because of what he has done. That's what gets him up in the morning. That's what gives him his drive. We are the other people. And he actually mentioned what happens if you guys end up generating enough money to become millionaires. He said, how do you think about being an on passive e air? I have to say, I would not say no myself, but there you go. Anyway, thank you very much for listening uh, to this recap. I'd like to say a special thanks as well to Peter Sarur for his recap, alongside with the help of Daryl Cook as well, who's traveling at the moment in Croatia, I believe. You guys do an excellent job and your uh, written recaps in the back office are absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for you guys for jumping on. I hope I haven't gone on too long and I hope I've managed to explain a lot of what Ash Mufara said last night in a way that you guys uh, can understand it. So coming up 20 minutes, we have uh, Marty Degamo. He'll be running through uh, updates in his own terms and language as well. Uh, let's pop over there and give him uh, some loving. Remember, guys, tomorrow is on Passive 360. OK, myself, Marty and Chris Johnson, OK, is there as well. Sebastian Wiskinski, welcome to the Tea Club, my friend. I'm so glad to see you back around as well. So great to have everyone here. Uh, sorry if I haven't given you a shout out. Uh, been a bit busy. Uh, really is. So let's look for Marty. Then Chris Hey Hey Johnson is on afterwards. Tomorrow, 5 p.m. UK, which is midday. Uh, in the States, we've got the OnPassive 360. We're hoping, uh, well, no, I can tell you now that we are going to be giving away another founder's position on OP360 tomorrow. And the following week, we're very hopeful to have a, a guest on with us. Uh, so stay tuned, guys. Lots of things are happening. And that's it for me. I'm back to normal tomorrow, and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.